Hi there, my name is Josh McDowell and I'm about to embark on a journey into the endangerment of bees and how both the environment and you have affected that. We're going to be talking to some really exciting people from Liverpool and the northwest of England and how they've been tackling this issue. And also, we're going to find out how you can make a difference. I stood there and the, the chap who was teaching took the lid off the hive. That was my first encounter with the bees. Even though several times prior to that, situations that had involved bees, and I think, I think the bees found me, I don't think I found them. My name's Martin, uh, I own a company called Bee Shack and I currently have 105 hives to date and I'm classed as a commercial beekeeper. Eight years ago I was doing a market and some lady was selling local honey and I came home and googled beekeeping courses and I started there with one hive and I say it progressively got bigger and bigger and bigger until now I'm running from an industrial unit, this is that big. Whilst we were filming with Martin, we were interrupted by a swarm of bees located in a nearby tree. Martin then collected his tools, which consisted of a large water container attached to a pole and an empty brood box with clean frames. Martin then safely collected the bees and put them into the brood box and brought them home to start a brand new colony. If you do find a swarm of bees, please do not contact an exterminator. Get in contact with Martin Swift or the Tree Bee Society, who will be more than happy to come along and remove the bees safely. Mysco College uh, have run beekeeping courses. There's about three being run, and it's run by the BU Project, which is, is part of the Arbright Future. And the money is funded from the big lottery. There were 33 different projects across the country. Uh, Blackburn House won the bid for beekeeping, and we're awarded just short of a million pounds to teach young people from the age of 16 to 24 uh, a full Lantra qualification beekeeping course which will make them competent as a beekeeper with a mentor for the first year. I'm on this beekeeping course at Myersco College because our tutor Becky thought it was good to put us something different and basically just see how we go with bees and how interesting it is. We go in to the hive say once a week and we'll go in and we'll check the hives for see how progress is, um, see if there's any queen cells or see if they, if they swarmed or if they stayed or if they're doing any progress and just basically looking after them every week. I was scared before. You don't know what bees are going to be like around you until you get in and actually up close with the bees and realise that they aren't going to sting yet. And to know which is which, like a worker it would sting if you if you get too close or you trap it um, and then a drone doesn't have a sting at all. It's really important for you to get involved with beekeeping because they don't seem to understand where their food actually comes from. They think they go to Tesco's or Asda for it but then by doing the beekeeping course they find out that the, the honeybee is, the, is the, the ground force for our food. Without them we would not have any food. So not only teaching them about the bees, but actually teaching how the food is made from the bees. Did you know that a bee's sense of smell is a hundred times more sensitive than a human? Also, a third of the world's food supply is dependent on pollinating insects. And finally, did you know that on average, a bee travels 800 kilometers in its lifetime?
Okay, so I am joined today by Yvonne Matthews, aka Vonnie B. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks, thanks very much for coming to speak to us, uh, Yvonne. Firstly, can you tell us a bit about you, why you do what you do, what you do, and uh, a bit about your story? My name's Yvonne, Yvonne Matthews. Um, I'm born and bred from Liverpool, and I, um, I started a relationship with bees many years ago um, when I lived in France. Okay. And um, I'd worked for many years in complementary medicine, and I used to teach complementary medicine, and then I was introduced to a couple who wanted me to help them with their business, and they were beekeepers. And at the time, I just thought bees brought in honey, but actually they were apitherapists, so they made products that help with health and well-being, which fitted in perfectly with you know what I'd been doing in my career. Well, when they introduced me to the bees and the products, it just blew my mind. Mm -hmm. So I straight away got on the phone to everybody back in England and said, you, you, you wouldn't believe what bees bring in and you all have to get on it, you know. When, when that lid come off the hive, it was just the most incredible experience I've ever had in my life. Have you, have you ever, ever done that? Yeah, well, you know, throughout this project, we've visited um, some beehives and it was the first for me. You know, I've obviously never done that before. We were in the bee suits and we went to visit the beehives. And, you know, when you consider there's, you know, tens of thousands of bees around you, it was unbelievable the emotion uh, that I felt, which was purely therapeutic, calm, and just the noise and the whole atmosphere was just completely calming. I just couldn't get over that. I thought I was going to be quite scared, which I guess a lot of people probably think. But it really was, like you said, it was a really therapeutic sort of experience for me. Mm. Once you open that beehive and you start looking at those frames and caring for the bees, anything else that you've got in your mind worrying you or anything just disappears. When you're concentrating and when you're first and a newly beekeeper you do have to concentrate a lot. Uh, you, everything else, all your worries and everything just goes out of your mind so it's sort of a bit of like a meditation or relaxation. I, I then went on after that, I, that just never left me mm. and I went on to and studied beekeeping and I then ended up with 13 hives in my back garden and at the time I had um, a Staffordshire Terrier and a Boxer dog and, um, and a cat and we used to have 13 hives, just an ordinary little garden in that house in Liverpool. We used to have uh, parties, barbecues, um, my son used to play the guitar with his friends in a band and nobody ever got stung. It was only, it just actually felt so relaxing and there was, at the time there must have been like a million bees in our back garden. Mm. And everybody, everybody would say, can I bring so-and-so around? Because I can't get over how calm it is. Yeah. Fascinating, isn't it? Is, it? It's, yeah, you're totally right. And that's the emotion that we felt. Bershko Farm have the perfect environment for bees. They have organically grown natural crops without pesticides. Located at Bershko Farm are the Tree Bee Society. My name is Abigail Reed, and I'm a director at the Tree Bee Society. We're a community-based not-for-profit and we specialise in the live removal of both bumble and honeybees. One of our main objectives is education. So we educate professionals and members of the public on how best to deal with bee colonies and also how to encourage more colonies and species. So bumblebees generally can live in colonies from anywhere up to 50 to 400 and they can nest in numerous places. The most obvious nesting sites are underground, and on top of the ground, mainly in old rats' nests, rodent holes, things like that. So you quite commonly will get them under decking and under sheds. And bumblebees and solitary bees will all pollinate different species of plants depending on each species of plant to species of bumblebee or solitary bee. And this all depends on the length of their tongues, on how quick they can fly, what's available in the areas where they're nesting, but also on the frequency of their buzz. Tomato plants are commonly pollinated by Bombus leucorum, which is a white-tailed bumblebee, which buzzes at a certain frequency to remove the pollen from the tomato plant to get it across to do the pollination. Solitary bees quite commonly live by themselves, but if there's one spot that's good for one, it tends to be good for more. So it may look like you've got a whole colony of what looks like wasps underground in various different holes when in fact it's just one solitary bee. 
Okay, so today we're gonna to be heading to Manchester, which is pretty much the city of the bees. We're gonna be speaking to Joe Harper, who is the founder of Just Bee Drinks. These guys are doing loads to tackle the issue of the endangerment of bees in the UK and around the world. So we're gonna be having a conversation about what they're doing and how you can get involved in that as well. They're a fantastic company with a really tasty drink and an even better objective. Let's see what they're all about. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about uh, Just Bee? Just Bee's been going for about three years now. Um, and it's, it's all about using honey as a natural sweetener for soft drinks and having a mission to save the bees. How did it start? Well, from a young age I always wanted to start my own business and run my own thing. But uh, when I came out of university I ended up going into accountancy. But that dream kept on running my own thing. And I spent myself, me and my friend Andy, time in, in the pub with a pint coming up with these weird and wonderful business ideas. And then one day, there was a light bulb moment. We are in my dad's garden. He's a beekeeper. My granddad was a beekeeper too. We are in my dad's garden and the bees are buzzing in the hives and it was, that's it. We can use my dad's honey to create a product, a healthy product with, and it went from there. Perfect. So it's a kind of a generational family business almost type thing. Absolutely, Just yeah. Just with, with an added element. So, what do you use the honey for then? Give us, give us an idea of how you use the honey then. Yeah, so Just Be, um, as I said before, it's, it's a healthy soft drink. We create, well here's, here they are, we create flavoured water drinks with, we use spring water, we use honey as a sweetener, and we, we obviously through different fruit flavours. And yeah, it's, it's, it's there to keep it all natural. There's a lot of soft drinks there out there at the moment that use lots of artificials, sweeteners and preservatives. Mm. We want to stop that and we want to avoid that and create an all natural product. So we use honey in there. Awesome, and it's very different, but although it tastes very, you know, it tastes very nice, it's, uh, it's weird to think there's honey in the drink. <laughs> yeah. In a weird way, you know? But that's it, it's not thick or gloopy like honey and there's just a drop in yeah, there just to get the right exactly. level of sweetness. Um, but I mean, most importantly to us really is obviously creating healthy drinks, but yeah. having that underlying mission that, that we're, we're, we're trying to help save the bees too. Yeah. That's great. Okay, so can you give us a bit of information about the benefits of honey to the human, essentially? Yeah, of course. So um, there's a few. Um, Number one, I mean, honey's completely natural, mm. so it's not been through a production process like some other sweeteners. Um, but also it's sweeter, so it's sweeter than, uh, than sugar, it's sweeter than a lot of other syrups, which means you don't need to use as much of it mm. to create that same level of sweetness, so you can keep calories lower. Um, it also has antioxidant properties, so it can help okay. boost the immune system. And fun fact that I learned recently is um, it's also great on burns and you know it's used topically on skin and wounds. Um, it's used in some hospitals as part of surgical procedures like that. And I was reading up that it was it's used in it was used in the war back in in uh, World War Two by uh, some of the armies when they were treating war wounds because it's uh, it's got that antiseptic nature to it and you can put it on skin and it helps to heal. But if you get a good quality raw honey. It's really good for your health. So the products of the hive, they bring in honey to feed themselves and then they bring in bee pollen to feed their babies. And bee pollen is the stamens off a flower. Hay fever is an allergy to grass and tree pollen and pollen off a flower is mother nature's natural antidote. So when people say local honey is good for hay fever, it's actually the pollen that's in the honey that's doing the job. And what they do is they bring that in and the queen lays a larvae in the, one of the cells and they put a piece of pollen in with the larvae and within a short time that bee is up and out and flying. And the reason for that is, is because in that pollen is so many vitamins and minerals. So it's actually fantastic for your health. And we can actually benefit from taking that as well. And then we have another product which is called propolis. And propolis is a resin that the bees bring in off a tree to coat the hive. And that's Mother Nature's natural antiseptic and it's a natural antibiotic. So it's really good for coughs and colds. It's really good to put on sores. I was at an event a couple of weeks ago. A lady got stung by a wasp and her leg became really inflamed. And we just took a bottle of propolis, sprayed it on, and it just calmed it down straight away. Bumblebees, 
have a way of telling humans when to back off or to tell any predator when to back off. Quite commonly you'll see videos on the internet of people high-fiving bumblebees. It looks really cool and it looks really funny, but when the bumblebees are lifting their legs, they're actually telling the human to back off, otherwise I'm going to sting you. And what they'll quite often do is they'll raise one leg to kind of say, you need to stop, you need to move on. And when they're getting really upset, they'll raise their entire front and raise two legs. We use that when we're doing removals to know when the bumblebees have had enough of us. Um, it's not the bees trying to high five you. <laughs> it's something entirely different. So we have the bumblebee, which is the big fat fairy one. Then we have um, the honeybee, which is called Apis melissrifer. It looks like a dirty wasp. And that's the bee that produces excess honey that we can take. Bees are vegetarian, but wasps are meat eaters. Hence why, when you're in the beer garden of the pub and you order a burger, instantly it's wasps that come around. And the reason why that is, is because they eat meat. Now, I remember saying to a friend once, OK, I can see why we have bees, but what's the deal with wasps? Because they just annoy you, don't they? And he said to me that actually, wasps have an important role as well. They pollinate orchids, and they also, because they're meat eaters, they eat flies. So without a wasp, we'd have lots of other insects that would be causing us a problem. Each bee has its own important job to do. And so one bee will bring in honey, another will bring in the propolis, and they never cross over into each other's jobs. So that bee is on a mission. And if it were to sting you, it would die. So for it to sting you, that's about survival of the colony. So basically, the long and the short is you're in the way. And all you need to do is move out the way because you might be in that bee's flight path. The only thing we have in common with a bee is temperature. The temperature of the hive is the same temperature as our blood. Their eyesight is different to ours. So if, when you see a bee, you start making a noise and flapping your hands really quickly, what happens is that movement will create a pocket of wind. And the first thing that happens is the bee wants to investigate. So you are going to actually attract it. It's going to come over to see what's, what's the fuss. If you just stay calm, move your hands slowly, and just stand up and walk away, they'll leave you alone. Because they're, they're actually busy. They're busy bees working for the love of the hive. The bees are all about community. The love of the hive, the love of the queen. They all look after each other and they work as one. And that's why a bee is prepared to die to make sure that the colony is okay. So it's all about the love and working together. And each of them bees all are given a job and they never cross over and do another's job. They just do the job that they're designated. And um, um, not that long ago, um, there was that awful tragedy in Manchester. And at the time, um, I'd just come out of a concert, a Gary Barlow concert in Liverpool. And um, when that tragedy had happened in Manchester, and um, we'd ordered a taxi and we came out and there was chaos in Liverpool and the taxi drivers were literally getting people and driving away as quickly as they could and at the time we didn't know but basically what was happening was is all those Liverpool taxi drivers knew what had happened in Manchester and all they were trying to do they were all working as a community to get us home safe so that they could then get on the motorway to get to Manchester to help everybody in that tragedy. And I, I think it's, it's rather interesting that the bee is the symbol of Manchester. And in that moment, in that awful, awful tragedy, I witnessed all those taxi drivers from Liverpool and the taxi drivers in Manchester all working as a community for the love of everybody else to make sure everybody else was safe. And if we can learn from the bees and live like that and all be kind to each other, how great would this world be? So I think we can look at the bees and learn. We know that bees are important for our food. So let's keep it fresh also with the help of bees. You can wrap your food in beeswax wraps provided by good to be Beeswax wraps keep your food fresh, whether that's fruits, vegetables, or sandwiches. Not only this, but they also provide a plastic-free alternative to cling film. So you can keep your food fresh and help the environment. 
have you ever had a name for any of your bees or even your beehives and if, if you could what would you call a bee um, well it's funny you say that um, we get a lot of emails and letters off people okay. and they actually come up with names for our bees just to give you an idea though there's about 50,000 bees in a beehive so you probably can't name them all but it take a while. one of the names that uh, keeps coming back from one of our one of our fans is, is Wilma Okay. Um, so Will with a B yeah. uh, is, is, is apparently what uh, we should be calling our queen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, these, these are some of the letters here, as you can see. Yeah. Um, we get a lot of children and, and adults too writing to us and coming up with suggestions like that. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's loads. Loads <laughs> of stuff going on. So do you have an unusual B fact or B joke that you could tell us? I'm sure you've got many. I've got plenty. Bee jokes. Yeah. yeah, how long have you got? Oh, let's go. We've got all, all the time. They're all like, I want to hear these. Um, do you know how a bee communicates to another bee? No. It's called the waggle dance. Okay. I'm not going to perform it right now. Okay. But yeah, um, that's how bees tell each other where there's pollen and flowers. Yeah. They'll come back to the hive and they'll put their bum in the air and they'll waggle it. And okay. then they'll point afterwards to the direction of the, 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 the flower. I'm sure I've seen that in town. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Any, uh, any bee jokes? Any bee jokes that you've got? Um, who's a bee's favourite singer? Who? Beyonce? <laughs> or Justin Bieber? Oh, jeez. Or how, how about Sting? Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, I can see it. Nice, <laughs> nice. I could spend all day actually thinking of bee puns. <laughs> you, you, you do use sort of some bee puns as well, don't you? Oh yeah, we've got them on the side of our bottles. If you uh, look at the uh, the bit, the boring bit below the oh, uh, yeah, yeah, below yeah. the the ingredients, there's a nice joke on there for anyone that buys a bottle. We'll, um, let, we'll let them buy a bottle and read that. Yeah, that one. perfect. <laughs> This is a really flamboyant and bright bee installation here at Heaton Park and it's actually one of over a hundred that have been installed around Manchester City Centre by Bee in the City Manchester. We hope that it will raise some awareness with the endangerment of bees in the UK and it will maybe encourage people to look up bees and find out more and see what they're doing for us rather than what we're doing for them. I'm actually here in Heaton Park. Behind me is hundreds and thousands of bees, honey bees, and it's an absolute spectacle. My name's Lena Crow. Um... I'm the president of Manchester and District Beekeepers Association and one of the trustees. Um, the association is a charity in its own right and we've had charitable status since 2014. How the, the charity itself is supported is purely by volunteering. Um, so people will come and do um, a, a basic beekeeping course with us, love it so much that they want to put something back into it. So it, it, it's all about um, the, the vicious circle, if you like, almost, because once you start, you, you're grasped by beekeeping. There's, there's absolutely no way it doesn't grab you um, one way or another. So for some people, it is they want to carry on actually beekeeping. For other people, it's they just develop their gardens. Um, and then others go on to, um, you know, coming back and helping us with the courses and the training of new beekeepers, which is where they started. I did a novice year last year and then I've come back as a deputy team leader this year. So it's just a really rewarding hobby, I suppose. Yeah, it's, it's just really interesting. There's so much to learn. There's not a lot of young people in it. There's not a lot of females in it either. So quite up and coming, I feel like it's a good thing to get into. Um, so what I wanted to ask you was, how important are bees to us? Um, I think you mentioned before to me that they're, after humans are the most researched um, sort of animal in the, in, the, in the world. So, you know, for people who don't know, how important are they? They're yeah. actually very important for our health mm. and for our survival. You know, if you think about it, they pollinate flowers. They pollinate our fruit and veg. They, um, so they give us medicine. You know, because the majority of medicines derives from nature, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, they, so we, we get aromatherapy oils, we get perfumes, we get, you know, if you like those tomatoes on your ham sandwich, then let's be honest, you, we need bees for that. Yeah. And they're, they're so important for us. Bees are really important to the environment. I mean, it's not just, some people think it's just about honey, mm. um, but they're much more important to the wider environment too. A stat that really surprised me was that one in every three mouthfuls of food that we eat relies on bees and Whoa. other pollinators pollinating farmers' crops. Yeah. They say about 75% of 
world crops rely on bees and other pollinators doing that pollination job. Um, so if they weren't there, we'd, we'd lose a lot of our fruit, vegetables, even nuts, coffee, your shirts yeah. made out of cotton, cotton fields, they rely on bees too. And economists have estimated that value that bees are contributing to 500 billion US dollars a year across the world. So, so they're pretty important. <laughs> kind of a big deal. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's weird that you, because you don't fully appreciate that, you know, you do tend to just think honey. Bees, honey, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but it's, there's so much more. So then, is there a problem with bees? And, you know, is there an issue at the moment? There's about 200 species of different bee in the UK. Okay. And recent research by the University of Cambridge suggests that 50% of them are under threat at the moment. Wow. Um, and then on the wider pollinator side, so other insects, about 16% of insects are under threat too. Right. So there is a big problem, yeah. I mean, I've seen firsthand how bees can die out. My father, my dad, he's had problems with his hives in the past and you can go through the whole winter, get to springtime, look in the hive and there's no bees left. Mm. And there's a number of reasons for that, not just the not lack of habitat, but bees are facing a number of different um, uh, threats. There's pesticide use by farmers. There's a varroa mite which has gotten into hives and it can, it can attack the bees. Mobile phone signals can even disrupt really? bees, yeah. L lose their memory and they can't get back to the hive. Yeah. And there's, there's, there's many other things too. So we do have a plight at the moment um, and we need to help the bees. And we can, and I think that's what's great about humans is that we do. When we see a crisis, we step up to the table, don't we? And um, the plight is, is that we've got a decline in bees. So what can we do to help? The good news is, is that in Britain, last year alone, we had a 50% increase in beekeepers. So people are taking on board the problem and doing something about it. So we've got people being beekeepers. One of the most important things that the bees bring in as well is water. They need to take water into the hive. What you can do is you can get some rainwater. If you get a little tiny tray, put some pebbles on it so that the bees can stand on the pebbles and put the water on it and then they can get a drink to take it back to the hive. I used to have my bees in um, not far from Buxton and they weren't doing very well at all and I brought them back to Liverpool and overnight it was like they visited the Torremolinos of the northwest because they were literally they were out they were flying they were really happy bringing loads of pollen in and I think it was because um, we don't have meadows as much now in the countryside so bees are actually benefiting more from being in the city because we've got beehives on rooftops. There's loads and loads of museums with beehives and shops with beehives on the roofs. I have 108 hives and they're in people's gardens, allotments and rooftops. There's a residential aspect of the business in which I put a hive in the garden free of charge. I maintain it, look after it and then the resident will get 10% of the honey back as a gratitude. We get 90% and that's where our business makes our money. Secondly, from a commercial level, uh, where you may be a company who needs to meet the environmental uh, accredita accreditations, then what you could do, you would actually buy the whole hive, set of bees, and pay us a management fee to look after them. In that case, you get all the honey back, and you, use that, you can use that for promotions or gifts for clients or service users or whoever you, you deal with. And you can talk maybe 100 jars of honey a year. And one of the other things that we can do is they hibernate from round about September, October. And they don't come out till end of February, March, depending on the weather. So they've had all that time where all they've had to eat is the store that they've had in the hive. So if you can imagine, by the time we start to see spring approaching, they are starving and they come out the hive and one of the first forms of food that they go to is dandelions and clover. So what I could ask you to do, please, is even though we all want to get our gardens tidy for the spring, if you could hang fire and just wait before you cut your grass. And so just leave those dandelions and that clover just a week or two longer because that's the first form of food that the bees can get to take back to the hive. And we can all just live together and look after each other and we can get the products of the bees and we can make sure that they're okay as well. 
I'm currently surrounded by loads of flowers that are really beneficial to bees and pollinating insects, such as the ladybird that's taking shelter on my shoulder. They really love a load of different types of flowers, but they really benefit from wildflowers as well. And we found that out through some of the experts we've spoken to throughout the documentary. So then, obviously, just be surrounds bees, um, <laughs> essentially. Um, how are you helping to tackle the, the problem at the moment? So, one of the big problems that bees are facing, there's, there are many, but one of them is less habitat than they used to be. Okay. You know, as we keep building and urbanisation means that there's less habitat for bees. So, one of the things Just Bee is doing is providing free wildflower seeds. So, we give out these little packets of bee-friendly seeds um, to anyone that asks. We've given out about 50,000 packets, <laughs> which equates to about 5 million flowers. Okay. Um, so far, for people to plant around the UK, and by people planting those, it creates food and habitat for the bees. And other pollinators too. Do you keep your own bee hives, essentially? Or you know, can you tell, give us a little bit of information about that then? Yeah, so, as I was growing up, my, my dad's a beekeeper um, and my granddad was mm. too, so I grew up around bees and honey. Um, so it was always honey on toast, honey in porridge, honey in cooking, you, you yeah. name it. That's part of the reason where the idea came from, to use it in soft drinks. Mm. Um, and so yeah, my dad's got beehives in his back garden and uh, I'm currently learning at the moment. And it's all about, you know, ethically beekeeping and making sure that you're looking after the bees first sure. so you'll take the honey but you'll only take enough honey to leave the bees with food for themselves mm. perfect thank you very much um so with regards to the growth of your business yeah. and the growth of other businesses that use honey how positively is that affecting bees as i mentioned before um we give out the free wildflower yeah. seeds now our brand mission is to save the bees and we pledge that every bottle of just bee sold saves a bee. And you think, how, 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 do you, mm. how do you pledge that? Well, we say that every, for at least every bottle we sell will help plant one flower. So far we've planted five flowers for every drink that we sold. Awesome. So yeah, the more drinks we sell, the more flowers uh, we, we plant. Uh, and so by doing that, it helps save the bees. So yeah, by growing our business, uh, we'll help uh, yeah. grow the bee population too. The, I guess that kind of makes it, makes it so worthwhile for you as well. Obviously it is a business, but if you can ethically help the environment and help bees, it must feel so good. Bees have got a lot of challenges. Yeah. Um, so if we can use Just Bee drinks to help them, it makes me a lot happier. Yeah, perfect.